Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Okay, we're here again. I'm going to be doing a podcast on the sciences. Probably put it in Foundations for Wellness. It's called the Brain Balancing Act. So this is a article that I flagged as interesting. I believe it's from Big Think. It's called, This Brain Balancing Act Allows Consciousness. Two types of thinking have a time-sharing deal going on in your brain. It's by Robbie Berman. This year, too. So the points are your DMN and DAT neural networks cooperate by staying out of each other's way. FMRI scans reveal a surprising temporal dance. When both systems are at the same activity level, boom, you're unconscious. I thought it was interesting right away. I am fascinated with the brain, the mind. I've explained this in some of my other ones. And I'll read the article. And maybe talk about it a little bit. I'll begin now. While consciousness remains the hard problem, as in what exactly is it, where it is, a new study published in Science Advances sheds surprising light on how the brain switches us from conscious to unconscious states and vice versa. It has something to do with an imbalance between two neural systems. In fact, consciousness requires that imbalance. There's links and there's some videos here. Big Think does that a lot, although they do have some crazy articles here and there that aren't too legit. I want to continue. Imagine you and a friend want to go out to dinner, but you want Chinese food and your friend wants pizza. If both your preferences carry equal weight, nobody gets to eat. Let's say that's like unconsciousness. But when one of you gives in, yum, consciousness. According to lead author Zururai Huang of University of Michigan Medical School, studies have shown that the anti-correlation of the two networks is vital for maintaining ongoing interaction between self and the environment. And that contributes to consciousness. The two neural networks are the default mode network, DMN, and the dorsal attention network, DAT. The DMN is an internally directed neural system that exhibits electrical activity in fMRI scans when you're awake and the brain is comparatively at rest and not working Uh, not at work performing a specific task. Maybe you're spacing out or reflecting on something, or maybe you're enjoying a memory of some sort. The DAT lights up when your brain is actively directed externally toward accomplishing a specific task. It is sometimes called the task positive system. The science term for their relationship is that they are anti-correlated and the maintenance of their opposite states is a consistent thing. So some sort of temporal relationship seems implicit. The implied temporal relationship has not previously been definitively shown to impact consciousness. Huang's study, however, tests the idea that this anti-correlation is a requisite for consciousness. Or maybe it's the other way around. Absent consciousness, the anti-correlation breaks down. To test the hypothesis, Huang and his colleagues analyzed resting state fMRI scans from 98 participants in varying states of responsiveness, located in Shanghai and Wisconsin. Because the petitions, petitions were given different tasks in various states, the researchers chose to grade their level of unresponsiveness instead of unconsciousness. In addition to a DAT mode control group, scans were performed on participants who were in unresponsive states from anesthesia, either propofol or ketamine, or from unresponsive wakefulness syndrome, or UWS. Ultimately, the researchers developed four data sets 
Propofol, Shanghai, Propofol, Wisconsin, Ketamine, and Neuropathological Patients. They found being unresponsive correlated consistently with scales in which the DAT and DMN systems were at equilibrium. No Chinese food or pizza for them. For confirmation, a second study was performed with scans from 248 subjects published in the Open fMRI database. The cohorts consisted of healthy individuals as well as individuals with psychiatric disorders including schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Various states of responsiveness in the available scans were identified and once again when DATA and DMN activation was equal, participants were in an unresponsive state. Of course, the study doesn't get us much further along regarding the heart problem, but we do now know a little bit more about how consciousness appears to work at least. The DMN and the DAT neural networks together account for a lot of what goes on goes on in consciousness, just please, not at the same time. So, I like this article. It's a little um, confusing in certain parts, maybe for a lot of people, and for me too. I had to go back and look at it, which is why I flagged it. I find it important that these type of studies, these type of things keep going on. We're trying to find that balance between um, how things work, we're going to try to be networking or mapping the networking and this type of stuff just blows my mind. When you can figure out different states of consciousness and what causes them, I think we're going to get a, a giant leap forward in psychiatry and neuroscience, especially in figuring out things that are, you know, responsible for people in comas. There was another study I think I flagged that had to do with um, shutting off the brain or putting it to sleep just by hitting a certain location. But trying to figure out consciousness is just one of the upper echelons of uh, the Holy Grail, so to speak. It's just, what do we get from this? Our consciousness is, it's all chemicals and biology and I think the future could be a blend of technology and our understanding of mapping our consciousness and how it works is really important. Anyway, I get a kick out of these type of articles, even if they're a little bit opinionated, but there are links in here. There are a couple of, um, there's a video, there's a little bit of a um, graph type thing. And if you go hit the links, you can see some of the more, you know, practical data. These are just, you know, little articles that I'll pick out that someone did. I give them credit for it most of the time when I can. But I hope, I'm always fascinated. I could never get enough of this stuff. So I thought I would share it with everybody. Let's get to thinking about thinking, people. Everybody stay healthy, stay safe, my best to you and yours.